Hello crafty friends, my name's Alicia but you can call me Crafty Owl. And in today's video, we'll be doing a little sheet load alternative using the August 2023 sheet load printable and a 6x6 paper pad. I hope you'll stick around to see how we're going to make the adjustments and still end up with no pattern paper scraps. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. When I put out the latest sheet load of cards, which calls for 12 by 12 paper, I asked if you would like to see it using 6 by 6 paper as well, and it was overwhelmingly a yes please. So I'm here today to show you how to do that. And just like the printable, when you use 6 by 6 paper, you won't have any pattern paper scraps left over. In today's video, I'll be using those single card dimensions most of the times, but we will still be doing that same landscape layout. Now, if you would like to see me use 6x6 paper and rotate the sketch or give it a little twist, make sure to check out the video that I have linked in the description box below. Up on screen now is a look at those cards. Now, if you haven't yet gotten your free printable, make sure to check out this month's debut video. And if you want some more tips and tricks on putting the cards together than you get today, you can also check out the process video. I have both of those linked down in that description box. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main supplies I'll be using today. I don't know about you, but here in the Northern Hemisphere, I am ready for fall. The heat index this week has topped 115, so I would definitely like some cooler days. So I decided to stick with that thought, and I will be using a fall-themed paper pad from Minte called Golden Days. I pre-selected two patterns, kind of a floral here and then a plaid that goes with those darker flowers. Now two pieces of 6 by 6 paper will get you two cards. So I got out for my card bases a single piece of toffee cardstock and then for my matting and my sentiment I got out a couple scraps. One in toffee and then an off-white. I almost forgot to tell you about my focal point. For that, I'm gonna be using the Not Too Shabby brand new Pretty Pumpkin stamp set, and I'm gonna do this sentiment that says, give thanks with a grateful heart. Now you might notice that this is not gonna fit in the area that I originally had on the printable. It calls for a little single line small sentiment here. But as I always say, sheet load is a great jumping off point for you. Feel free to make these your own. And speaking of making your own, if you haven't yet seen my collaboration team creations, each of them did just that and I know you're gonna love to watch them. So I will link the playlist in that description box so you can see what they've created. As I get into the process, I will tell you about other products and tools I bring in, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm gonna get started by showing you how to cut your six by six papers so you get every piece you need and you're not left with any scraps. Now, if your pattern does have a specific orientation, make sure you know that before you make your first cut. The first thing we're gonna do is cut a two inch strip off the bottom and that is gonna be the pattern paper that goes diagonally across the front of your card. So this is super easy. You just rotate it that 90 degrees and cut two inches off the bottom. Now, so my pieces didn't end up being way off from each other, I actually centered it between the two inch mark on the left of my cut line and the four inch mark on the right. That way, if the paper is just a little bit smaller than six inches, you still have some even pieces there. 
Now we're going to take the piece that was left over at the top. This is already the four inches tall we need, so we're going to cut each piece to five and a quarter inches wide. That's going to leave you with those two skinny leftover pieces of pattern paper. And just like it says here on the printable, we're going to use those to decorate the inside. So we'll be cutting each of these into a piece that is one and three quarters inches tall and one that's two and two quarters inches tall. And as you can see here, once all of those are cut, there are no pattern paper scraps left over. The next thing I'm gonna cut is the mat for that two inch by six inch piece, and I will need two of those. Originally, I thought that one scrap of the toffee would do it, but then I realized I needed something that was four and a half inches tall, and my piece was only four and a quarter, so I cut both of these to six inches wide and then down into pieces that were two and a quarter inch tall. Then to get the two card bases I'll need for today, I brought in that single piece of toffee cardstock and cut it in half to five and a half by eight and a half. These will then fold down for the card bases. Now next up, it should be time to cut the sediment, but because mine is gonna be a little bit different, we'll do that a little bit later on. For now, I'm going to get my card bases scored and folded, and I use my score buddy to do this. Now, this is an optional step. You could always just fold these by hand. I always just think I get a more crisp, nicer fold when I use my scoring tool. The main pieces are all cut so we can start assembling the cards. To help me map the two by six inch strips, I did bring back in my score buddy and I used that ledge at the bottom to help me line those pieces up. This was something I showed in the original process video, but I just wanted to bring it back into this one in case you hadn't seen it yet. Once those two pieces were matted, they got put diagonally across pattern paper A or the four by five and a quarter. Now, as always, you can change the angle on this, make it angle the opposite way, totally up to you. I did go ahead and stick as the sketch showed, and once those were on there, I just trimmed off the excess with some nonstick scissors. These pieces then got adhered flat to the front center of the card bases. Easy peasy on these. Like I mentioned before, my sentiment's gonna look a little different than on that original sketch. For mine, I will be using a larger sentiment and I'm gonna be stamping it onto a die cut piece and I'll be using the arched stacklets from Tailored Expressions. I chose one that fit the sentiment and I die cut that out of some off-white cardstock. To help me stamp the sentiment, I brought in my exclusive Tailored Expressions Teal Misty, which I have had for almost a year, but I just recently broke it out for my very first video as a member of the Tailored Expressions video team. If you haven't yet seen my first video, I would love for you to check it out. Make sure to look in the description box below for a link. To match the plaid pattern paper and those darkest flowers on the floral one, I am using Tailored Expressions Mold Wine Ink to stamp my sentiment. Now you will notice I did test this already and my stamp is a little stained, but as long as you clean it well, that's not gonna affect any future stampings. I got that place where I wanted it on my arch die cut, and then I inked it up and stamped it on both of those pieces. One of the great things about a stamp position or like the Misty is you can quickly do repeat stamping. While I still had the Misty out, and even though we're going to be decorating the inside with the pattern paper scraps, I wanted to add just a little bit more by stamping one of the pumpkins from that pretty pumpkin stamp set on the inside bottom left corner of the card. To make the stamping on the inside a little subtle, I did want to go with a tone on tone or watermark look for this pumpkin. So I got out my Tailored Expressions Toffee ink and I will be stamping that onto that toffee cardstock base. Once the pumpkins were both stamped, I brought in those scraps of pattern paper so I could finish decorating the inside. 
to do this I cut angles at the bottom of each piece and then I switched them up so there would be one of each pattern on the inside of the cards. I adhered these flat down using my ATG. The longer one went on the outside and the smaller one just inset a little bit from that. Now this was a process that I went over more carefully in that original process video. I just wanted to show you here how it was done. Now that the insides were all decorated, it was time to finish decorating the front. Since the cards were pretty flat so far, I did add some foam tape to the back of the sentiments before adding those to the card fronts. I liked it more lined to the right, and I tried to get even borders on the top, right, and bottom of that piece. Now once I had both of those in place, I did want to add a little bit of shine. So to do this, I brought in Tailored Expressions matte gold enamel dots and I added three to each card. I like how these have that gold look to them, but they're not super shiny. When I placed these, I added the largest one on the sheet to the top left of the sentiment and then two of the smallest ones to the bottom right of the sentiment. I like to try to work in threes and I try to keep a triangle around my sentiment to pull the focus there. And here are some close up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I use 6x6 paper with the August 2023 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.